All right, welcome to Modern Explorer. I'm Matteo, and this is going to be like a little recap of the expedition. I'll make a, a more detailed video later, but just so you have an idea of what happened. And basically what happened was <laughs> nothing went according to plan from the very beginning. And I'm just going to touch on it a little bit and uh, just, to, you know, keep you updated. Well, basically, the first thing that happened was... Yeah, I've been working on the Jeep. I've been trying to get it working, uh, you know, reliable, everything up and running. And I do. I spend like like a, maybe a month, two months with my buddy Craig fixing it up. <laughs> and then it were about, I don't know, I'd say like three weeks before we're, I'm supposed to head out there to uh, to meet with everyone else for this to do this operation. And we start hearing this little pinging, ping, 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 ping coming from the, the bottom, like, uh, of the engine. And I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I, I just spent a ton of money and time trying to get this thing working, and now <laughs> we have something else right before I'm supposed to get a leave. So like, he comes and helps me. And he's, he's, uh, he's helped me a lot with this. He comes out on his days after work, and we, we get this done. And we, we have to take the oil pan down, and, and, like, it ends up being, like, these... It ends up being these bushings that need to be replaced. And so we do that. And of course, we run into one problem after another. One of them, of course, is like they, they gave me the wrong like oil pump. Because I decided, well, I might as well replace that since we're back. We're in there. And they gave me the wrong one. So I can't put on the pan. And I already, you know, like I have to replace like the gasket all over again. Basically, it's one thing after another. And we always find out like later in the night when everything's closed, so we have to wait till the next day. And this goes on for for the, uh, like uh, a couple weeks, you know, just like fixing this up. And so, on the last day, the or I would say like they're already down there, and I have to, I'm trying to finish the jeep or I'm driving my daily that I've been neglecting because I've been working so much on the jeep. As soon as we finally get it running, because of course, like the oil, the new one, the oil pump's not self-priming, so I have to do it manually, which again takes another day. I get the Jeep working, and now there's a new ping. The other one stopped, but now there's a really loud one at the top of the engine, and that's really bad news because that's way harder to work on. And that's at that point, I might as well just rebuild the engine. But, the, but at the end of the day, I still can't go. So I need a new engine, rebuild it. I'm probably going to end up like seeing if I can afford to do like an LS swap to put a V8 in there. But I can't drive it. So I'm just like, well, that's terrible. Because the Jeep, right, he has, it has solar panels. It has a lot of the comfort. So I can stay in a place for a long period of time, charge everything up, food, with the refrigerator, a bed system. And heck, even take a shower because it has like an onboard shower. But I can't do any of that at this point. So that's that's already like a huge bummer, but I have to go because they're already down there. All my times ran out, and I I even put like my diesel heater, so on cold nights I'd be warm in my princess camper Jeep, whatever. So I just head down there, like just head down there in my daily, and meet up with them. But there's already another problem. You see, the area we wanted to set up uh, is packed. Because it's been it's been winter this whole time, and on this particular week, it's we had beautiful like sunny like seventy degree weather, and it we didn't we didn't consider it's also Easter Sunday, so everyone's out, so we don't get a spot in the area that I've been reconning that I've been building up and building this whole plan. So that's that was my bad. I, I should have seen that coming. Uh, but to be fair, I had planned to be there days before, ahead of time to get these parking spots. And I thought we'd be okay. I didn't perceive everything going wrong i knew the best laid plan never goes according to plan but this this was like just overkill but it pushed us in a new direction so uh we couldn't get one there and so what we ended up doing was we ended up like looking in a different places where other people had encounters to see another place to set up which you know was cool we got to travel we got to drive around you know like meet up with 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 Jeff his wife and uh, and Steve and Rob and uh, the place we ended up inspecting the most 
is this area like up, up along the wet mountains that's very similar to where I've had my own experiences further up here along the the, the front range. Like it's a very similar type of topography and and uh, environment, etc. So we go up there. Some uh, we go hiking. Some people take falls and get hurt that come with us, which is another you know like <laughs> everything's not going according to plan. And on the way back, after we're going up with this gentleman that's actually telling us what's happened there as from a kid to adulthood going to this canyon of these interactions and these like these eyewitness accounts of seeing like this these hominids. And on the way back down, uh, one, one of our like uh, team members, Jeff actually sees one. And so that that's so at least we're getting like a you know good news. Even though nothing's going according to plan as far as strategically and operationally, we're in a place, and we, on day two of this, we already have a sighting. So that's exciting. Obviously, we we run down. We try to. There's no planning here because no, like it's the first time I've ever been there. Like, I, so we hadn't had any plans, any operations. You know, like what we're gonna do, what we're not gonna do. So it was kind of like just everyone's kind of going crazy, just doing their own thing. Uh, so. Uh, but but at the same time, it was it kind of benefited us because things were so hectic and everyone's doing their own thing. Each of the teams, that I think this is why like Jeff was able to see this the Sasquatch on the ridge line looking down at the other group that we thought had left, but they were actually just bored making noise down there. And then of course when we went over like to try to inspect it like with our cameras and drones, the uh, we hear this loud knock from the back which you'll be able to hear because it got recorded. Glenn was recording, and it, it's very clear, like like a loud knock, I think, trying to distract us. Uh, you know, like, And what we ended up doing, because we, we even even after the other area opened up in, like, Oil Wells Flats, the, we couldn't get the RV at the, up there, one, and the wind just picked up. The wind just was so crazy the, the, whole, the whole time, basically. Which defeated the whole purpose of using like these these nice drones with thermals, in order to take advantage of the environment and landscape. So that that was kind of like again another thing. Once we were finally like organized and we were just like, and we were ready to go, go uh, try to finish halfway through the the mission and the operation that we planned out. It still was was a bust, but that again pushed us back over into the canyon where. <laughs> Turns out, back in the day, they would actually fire cannonballs up at the mountainside. <laughs> and when I was going exploring up at the ridge line, the mountainside to go find the area that that Jeff had found, seen, like the the Sasquatch from, I I stumbled across uh, like like uh, you know cannonballs, and even like a bowling ball way up high on this like really steep ridge line. And eventually, we found out about the range stuff, and it was pretty neat. Like I didn't expect to find that at all. But we also found tracks and. A lot of other different things uh, up in this area and like tons of people because since Glenn's reached out to so many people that have had some type of weird experience up there a lot of it pr very clearly you know connected to the North American hominid so that's the basic recap uh, nothing went according to plan we in fact we only got like a few hours up at oil wells flats where we wanted to conduct the whole operation to dis discuss like a new plan of attack because this uh the area that we wanted to set up in this woman it's a huge area where you can fit maybe i would say like 10 large campers she had this small little camper maybe like like 13 16 footer and the entrance to get in to this huge open area where, where it would have been perfect she went and dragged a log so no one else could come in and then when we asked her like if to let us know like when she was leaving she she was just like really rude about it just because we're like well you know we want to we want whatever you leave we want to take this this uh, camp spot and so that was you know you run into all kinds of people she was definitely she was definitely pretty angry just in general so that that was another bust um but yeah we planned out a new spot and everything but then the wind picked up so we couldn't even do it so it isn't necessarily what i want to use but it's what ended up happening. And then when we tried to like spend the night up in the canyon and employ the thermals, the FLIR, like we had three, like, uh, you know, nice FLIR cameras that, that, that Steve, like, you know, donated for this, uh, this uh, cause for this project. 
uh, along with the gimbal, and we could put them in, in plastic bags, so no one, you can't, you can't actually see it running, but you can see through the plastic bags. But FLIR is just a terrible company, honestly. Like, uh, they, they make, for the price point that they, they sell these products for, they're, they're terrible. Uh, basic things, for example, like any camera in, in any, in any, or any audio recorder, you'll notice, like, if it's, for, if it's long periods, it'll break it up into segments so that the cachet uh, doesn't get too, too overran in the, the actual system itself. And that's why you can just continuously keep recording. But FLIR, which is like, you know, a very basic thing to do, and we're, we're dealing with like, oh, like an over $4,000 camera, doesn't do that. So you can't keep it on recording the whole time because uh, it'll still crash and it won't, and you won't be able to save it. So I found that out the hard way because we, I never tested out like that because I was, you know, like, assuming <laughs> like any other like tech, even like really cheap ones will do this, but not, not FLIR. I've had so many problems with these FLIR cameras uh, in general, just like with the, the, the software, with the, all like the features they're supposed to be able to do. And it's been, it's been failure. So honestly, like I would not recommend FLIR for anything. And I understand it, it drives me nuts because they were even terrible, like using them in the Marine Corps when I was in Iraq and Afghanistan. They were like the old one, big and bulky. And, uh, you know, like it's just, it's just ridiculous how much like that they sell you the, this equipment for and then the battery you have to buy the battery separately which is another like like few hundred dollars uh, it just it made me mad i'll be honest it made me mad because i was just like that's like our tax dollars at work because they're selling these to, to the government to military and they're not even good they're, they're terrible they're terrible and i i'm honestly like really disappointed but we're looking at other ones that are more like that are you know smaller uh, private companies like atn that seem a lot more promising, but I would not recommend FLIR uh, at all. In fact, I, ever, ever, <laughs> even I even got the FLIR one, like the cheaper one for the cell phone, and it was it was still just as bad, and the battery just died. Like Thermal Seek, I used those, and I really liked it. I just didn't like that I had to connect it each time to the, my phone, and it took some time to set up, and I couldn't have it there permanently because it was I was afraid that the thing would break. So, yeah. I, I don't recommend FLIR for anything, honestly. Like, I'm just really disappointed. And if I've ever complained about any type of product, uh, it's it's FLIR. That's, it's FLIR. That's never again. Never again. Um, but, yeah, so that was another disappointment, you know, because I stayed up super late. I, you know, I was using the joystick to, to get this moving. And then, I, and then, like, when I did go to sleep, I set my alarm just to make sure, like, you know, within the, the range of the battery power would last, I'd be up to turn it off. And it was for nothing because it had already froze and it wouldn't let me stop it. So all that data is corrupted or not even available at all. Again, our priority was to try to use the thermal camera, both, you know, handheld and the drone to hopefully get some, some good, like, documentation of these hominids moving around. But that failed because everything else failed, so we weren't in the right spot where we did get a chance to use it. But we did succeed as far as interaction with Sasquatch. We got like a visual, like, you know, on the second day. So, uh, I mean, mixed results for sure. Mixed results was for sure. And I'll, I'll be like showing you in a later video the, the footage and stuff that we took. But it did teach us a lot. And it did teach us like things like for next time to improve upon. Now, obviously, one of the ones is, is going to be FLIR. That's you know, like <laughs> that's a given, and uh, just a ways to operate and organize ourselves better. And definitely the uh, the wind, because the wind stopped us in that area because of the, I think the time of the season maybe just it was just a lot of wind. In order to employ the drones on the thermals effectively, so. There's a basic recap. I think what I'll be doing uh, this summer, because the Jeep is just going to take time and money to, to fix it up, is I'm just going to be going kind of in my backyard on these along these foothills of Colorado Springs where I had my own encounters like multiple times with the same group and just trying to get closer. Because, I mean, that's that's my, my goal personally. Isn't necessarily to document them. Isn't necessarily to, to prove that they exist because I already know. But it's for me to have like more one-on-one -on -one interactions with them. 
and I feel like I may be in a spot like if if I if I have the courage when they, we are around each other and they start to interact with me to take that next step and try to get closer with those interactions. I think they're ready. I think I'm ready. Uh, you know, I think they, they show a lot of really a lot of interest in me, uh, and I think it's built up like that over the years, just because I've been up here since I was a kid, and weird stuffs happened, and I think it's uh, it's one of those things where it's just taking it's this many years of rapport, and I'm just now catching up with them, getting to know me by by watching me, and I'm just now finally reciprocating, feeling comfortable enough to do more than just you know, run away or stay in my Jeep and kind of hide because uh, it was, it was definitely scary. It was definitely, it was definitely scary, but thanks. Thanks for listening. And we'll be, we put on more content and I'll let you know the updates on if I find anything else in my neck of the woods where I've had a, a lot of success. Uh, I mean, obviously in the beginning it wasn't, it wasn't success I was looking for because it happened by, you know, by accident. I didn't want it, but now I'm glad it happened and we'll see like where, what else can come of it. Anyway, stay tuned, and thank you. Like, subscribe, share, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.